Welcome back. Well, on Friday night, the former Universities Minister Sam Gima became the latest member of the government to quit and subsequently backed a second referendum, which may be music to the ears of our next guest, the campaigner, Gina Miller. Thank you very much for being on the show with us. Now, before we get to the, the talk about second referendums, I'm keen to get your thoughts on the interview that we've just heard. Um, Nick Bowles, he's proposing uh, Norway Plus, if you like, staying in the single market. Is that something that you'd support? I think anything is better than actually this uh, withdrawal agreement we've got, which is just giving away sovereignty, giving away everything. It is the worst possible deal. I don't know how it took this long to get here. But the thing is, it doesn't matter if it's Norway plus a plan B. The reality of where we are is that any option will require an extension to Article 50. We don't have the time because in Nick's suggestion of Norway Plus, you'd have to negotiate with the members of EFTA, you'd have to go and look at the protocols in the EEA. It's not just going to something we can take off the shelf. And we don't have the practical time to do that with the 29th of March looming. And I guess it's the same for Labour. I mean, we've heard from Sir Keir Starmer there talking about a general election. Yeah, I mean, whatever the options are right now, the reality is what counts. And the reality is this vote is not going to get through Parliament in nine days time you know the, the Prime Minister what is plan B is it an election that she calls herself is it an election that the Labour Party wants to call a vote of no confidence is it an alternative is it sending her back whatever the alternatives are other than no deal would require an extension and this idea that there is a no majority in Parliament for no deal I must just point out that if there is no other option, because of the MPs allowing Article 50 to be triggered, no deal is the legal end game here. So there, this idea so that it won't can't happen. Stop it. So they can't stop it because what they should have done is all these wranglings and everything that's going on now, when I won my case, this is when those debates should have been happening. Because too many MPs, because so many of them, triggered Article 50 without really thinking about the consequences of that, the actual legal end game of that trigger is no deal if there's no other option. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts about a second referendum. There's been more and more talk about the possibility of uh, having another uh, Brexit vote. Surely that would be a gift to the far right. I don't think it would be. And the reason I say that is because you have to, if you just clear away the bluster and the noise and this whole idea of the will of the people two years ago, look at what people are saying now. And the polls, plus travelling around the country that I've been doing for months and months and months, people are saying, we actually do want to say, we do want to find out what's going on, we do want to, now we know more. And this is not about leave or remain or anything like that. You know, it's 73% of the Labour Party membership, it's 112 Labour constituency, it's the 67 um, Conservative um, Party the, who are on the uh, sort of, you know, the, on the border of, uh, of uh, their seats. You know, there is so much here where people are saying we want to have, have a say on this and decide what happens in the future. And, and the other thing to point out in this is if we're now pushing for a general election from both parties, that is a waste in my view to go back to the people because an election should be about your full manifesto and your policies for all sectors of society, not to be just dominated by one issue. You're talking there about the conversations that you've been having um, around the country. And as you know, on the show, we try and get out and about as well and talk yes, to people. And I have to say, um, I do think there is a, a, a large number of people in the UK who would feel utterly betrayed if there was a second referendum. And, and the worst thing, perhaps, is I don't think they would even feel that surprised. It's almost as if they expect... It to but I think that, that is resolved by what's on the, the establishment to I think to me, override their just decision. In, in my opinion, that it wouldn't be because it would be what's on the ballot paper. And whilst it's the MPs and Parliament will have to decide that the Electoral Commission, if we got to that stage, which I think we will get to and we're edging towards it as being the only plausible way out of this mess, this political mess, then I think actually no deal would have to be on the ballot. I think we would have to be fair to everyone. And for that's why I believe it would have to be all three options, because we couldn't have a situation where people felt that they voted leave and they didn't actually, they weren't listened to. We have to respect that vote. Um, just finally, um, you, a successful businesswoman, you know, you've decided to kind of stick your neck above the parapet, if you like, on Brexit. Um, you get some pretty vicious abuse on social media and, and elsewhere. I mean, I've seen it even announcing that you were on the show. 
How does that make you feel? Why do you go through all this? I've, I've been a campaigner for nearly 20, 30 years now, and I've always felt that people have the right to be spoken to honestly and to be given um, information in a way they can understand to make an, un, uh, an informed choice. And that's what I'm campaigning for. I think process matters, honesty to people matters, and people having the information. You know, I've even gone to the extent of launching a new campaign in September, which is sort of called End the Chaos, because I thought this is where we'd be. And our remit is to try and answer people's questions. They're not being spoken to in a way that can give them an informed choice and help them understand where they are. And surely, that's what we should all be doing, and, and I'm going to carry on fighting for that. I'm going to carry on fighting for people to have the right to understand what's going on. Okay, Gina Miller, thank you very much.